Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I offer an update on the case of Tanner Cook? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. This case takes place in 2023 and primarily involves two people, Tanner Cook and Alan Walter Coley. First, I'll take a look at Tanner Cook. Tanner is a social media influencer who posts videos on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. He lives in Loudoun County, Virginia, which is an extremely wealthy area just west of Washington, D.C. At the time of the incident, he was 21 years old. Tanner's YouTube channel is called Classified Goons. He and his friends record prank videos where they target innocent victims in public places. Here are a few examples of the types of pranks Tanner perpetrates. Trying to fire employees at stores where he does not work, asking workers to assist him with stealing, pushing recording devices in people's faces, accusing shoppers of stealing while dressed as a security guard, grabbing items that a shopper is trying to pay for at a self-checkout, and dressing up as a clown and causing a disturbance. At the time making this video, Tanner's YouTube channel has over 57,000 subscribers and has been viewed over 2.6 million times. Now looking at Alan Walter Coley, Alan was 31 years old at the time of the incident and lived in Leesburg, Virginia. He was a high school graduate who worked as a DoorDash driver. Alan had a license to carry a concealed weapon. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. On April 2, 2023, Tanner Cook was in the Dulles Town Center, which is a mall located in the town of Sterling, Virginia. Just before noon, Tanner and three of his colleagues were in a food court playing a prank involving a translation app on Tanner's cell phone. Alan Coley was also in the food court during this time. On a video that was recorded of the incident, Alan can be seen with a DoorDash order in his hands. Tanner is following Alan while holding a cell phone in his hand. As the two men are walking, Tanner holds the cell phone about six inches from Alan's face. Using a translation app, the phone repeatedly plays the phrase, quote, hey, dip blank, quit thinking about my twinkle, unquote. Presumably, the last word is a reference to genitals. As Tanner was holding the cell phone in Alan's face, Alan pushed the phone away and told Tanner to stop. Alan walked away from Tanner while keeping his body and head turned so he could see him. Tanner refused to stop harassing him and continued to advance. As Alan was walking away and Tanner was in pursuit, Alan said stop again before retrieving a pistol from his pocket and firing a single shot. Tanner Cook was struck in the abdomen. At this point, Tanner stopped harassing Alan, mostly because of the shooting part. The police were contacted at 11.57 a.m. They arrived three minutes later and found Tanner just outside the mall. He was taken to a local hospital. The bullet pierced his stomach and liver. He had surgery and was eventually released. The police found Alan in the food court. He was placed under arrest at 12.02 p.m. Alan was charged with aggravated malicious wounding, using a firearm in the commission of a felony, and discharging a firearm within a building. He was facing 20 years to life in prison just for the aggravated malicious wounding charge alone. Allen was held without bond. Tanner was interviewed in the hospital. He said, quote, I was playing a prank and a simple practical joke, and this guy didn't take it very well, unquote. He also claimed that Allen didn't say anything to him, which of course was not true based on the video. Allen told Tanner to stop three times. On September 25, 2023, Alan Coley's trial started. The state argued that all Tanner was doing was playing a silly phrase on his phone. The prank was bizarre, but not threatening. The shooting represented force which exceeded the threat to Alan. He took a gun to a cell phone fight. Alan's defense argued that Alan shot Tanner in self-defense. Tanner testified at the trial. He said that he earns two to $3,000 a month with his prank videos. After the shooting, 
his subscriber count increased by 16,000. Tanner referred to his videos as comedy content. One could argue that testifying his content contains comedy could be thought of as bordering on perjury. Tanner testified that he tries to confuse the target of his pranks for the amusement of his online audience. He doesn't intend to elicit fear or anger, but admitted that his targets often react with those exact emotions. So Tanner admitted that he causes people to be fearful and angry. On September 28, the case went to the jury. Three hours later, they sent a note to the judge saying how they were, quote, divided in terms of whether the defendant acted in self-defense, unquote. Two hours after that, they came back with their verdict. They found Alan Coley not guilty of aggravated malicious wounding and not guilty of use of a firearm in the commission of a felony. The jury found Alan guilty of discharging a firearm within a building, which is a class six felony in Virginia. The penalty for this crime is up to five years in prison. Allen's defense attorney argued that the one conviction doesn't make sense in light of the other two acquittals. How can someone act in self-defense but still be guilty of discharging a firearm? Either it was self-defense or it wasn't. The jury clearly believed it was. Allen's attorney asked the judge to throw out the conviction. A hearing was scheduled so the judge can decide whether or not the conviction will be upheld. Tanner Cook did not appear to be discouraged by the verdict, he said, quote, I really don't care. I mean, it is what it is. It's God's plan at the end of the day, unquote. Tanner indicated he would continue recording prank videos. Now moving to my analysis. This case has attracted a lot of strong feelings, with many people coming to Allen's defense and arguing that he was not guilty of any crime at all. The state, of course, disagrees. They claim that Allen used too much force for the situation. This brings me to the question, was Alan Coley guilty of any crime in this case? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that he was guilty, starting with the inculpatory factors. Tanner was unarmed during the confrontation. His colleagues were also unarmed. Alan may not have known this, but there was no visible weapon either way. Tanner's behavior was unsettling, creepy, bizarre, ill-advised, disturbing, strange, menacing, and harassing but he did not make physical contact with Allen or overtly threaten him during the confrontation. The nature of the message that Tanner's phone was playing was consistent with a poorly designed prank, more so than an attack. The incident took place in the middle of the day in a mall full of people. It wasn't like Tanner confronted Allen at night in an alley. Allen had several non-shooting options available to him, like calling the police, yelling for help, or continuing his retreat. Moving to the exculpatory factors, Tanner initiated contact with Allen, who was working and minding his own business. Tanner and Allen did not know each other. The confrontation involved Tanner acting in a menacing manner. It was not immediately clear that he was perpetrating some type of prank. Standing at six foot four, Tanner was much taller than Allen and was accompanied by three colleagues this could be interpreted as intimidating. By pushing the phone in Allen's face and playing a message that used an expletive, Tanner was acting in a way that could be interpreted as aggressive. Tanner had no legitimate reason for engaging in this activity. For example, it wasn't like Allen was a celebrity and Tanner was a reporter. The day before, Tanner had actually been kicked out of that same mall by security after trying to engage in pranks. He knew that he was not welcome there, and that his activity deviated from societal norms. On the stand, Tanner admitted that his pranks caused people to react with fear and anger. Furthermore, he created confrontations with the purpose of causing confusion. Anyone who sets out to confuse people is taking a risk of causing fear. During the confrontation, Allen told Tanner three times to stop, and on one occasion physically pushed the phone away. Tanner should have known to discontinue the harassment as Allen's behavior was consistent with fear and anger. Allen walked away from Tanner during the confrontation. He did not immediately resort to using lethal force. Rather, he retreated. In addition, Allen was looking over his shoulder as he retreated, indicating that he was afraid of Tanner, like he didn't know what Tanner was going to do 
and he did not want to lose sight of him. Instead of respecting Allen's decision to create distance, Tanner continued to advance and demonstrated an unwillingness to disengage. At this point in the confrontation, Allen had unsuccessfully deployed three strategies to end the confrontation peacefully. Allen repeatedly told Tanner to stop, but Tanner did not stop. Allen pushed the phone away, yet Tanner continued to hold the phone in Allen's face. And Allen retreated, but Tanner continued to pursue him. Only at this time, when Allen had exhausted other strategies to defuse the situation, did he resort to using deadly force. The state implied that Allen jumped directly to using excessive force, but he didn't. He used three other strategies prior to firing his pistol. Allen shot Tanner just one time, which was sufficient to terminate the confrontation. Allen did not continue to shoot Tanner until he was dead. He only used the force necessary to protect himself from a perceived threat. After the shooting, Allen immediately surrendered. He made no effort to avoid taking responsibility as the person who fired the pistol. When considering all the evidence in this case, do I think that Alan Coley was guilty of any crime? No, I believe that Alan was not guilty beyond a reasonable doubt and not guilty in reality. Even though his reaction does not represent the recommended response, I believe that, in the moment, he had a reasonable fear that he was in imminent danger of bodily harm. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Tanner Cook appears to have a lack of empathy. He is unable to recognize emotions in other people. This means he doesn't know when to stop with his pranks. He cannot tell if a target is happy, angry, confused, or fearful. Tanner also appears to have a lack of insight. He doesn't see how other people perceive him. He falsely believes that he is funny, and the people watch him because of his comedic talent. When Tanner Cook targeted Alan Coley in the food court of the mall, he was determined to record a prank. Unable to recognize emotions, Tanner did not understand that Alan was afraid. Tanner tried to make himself appear like a deranged individual, and he was successful. This forced Alan to provide Tanner an indicator which could not be misinterpreted, namely, a bullet. Rather than accept responsibility for provoking the incident, Tanner played the victim, and the state of Virginia went along with it. They prosecuted Alan. The jury was not sure what to make of the case. They didn't like the idea of Alan shooting Tanner, but Tanner's behavior was so outrageous and threatening, they couldn't bring themselves to convict Alan of the most serious charge. They decided to split the difference. However, the decision was inconsistent. In my opinion, Alan cannot be guilty of discharging a firearm within a building if the shooting occurred during a legitimate self-defense incident. I'm not sure what message the jury is sending. Did they expect Alan to continue to retreat outside and then shoot Tanner? Like Alan was supposed to say to Tanner, I'm feeling threatened right now, but can we take this outside? I would not want to discharge my gun in a building. That could be considered a crime. The outcome of the trial has not eradicated Tanner's desire to engage in nonsensical behavior. Based on the available evidence, it appears as though Tanner's father, Jeremy Cook, is sticking up for Tanner. For example, Jeremy was upset by the verdict. He sent a statement to the media claiming that, quote, we are all less safe than before, unquote. Jeremy called the verdict a product of mob rule and said the media painted Tanner as the aggressor and Allen as the victim. He complained that Saturday Night Live mentioned the incident and supported Allen's behavior. Jeremy said, quote, everyone laughed, so millions of people saw this and just went with it, unquote. A Loudoun County prosecutor told Jeremy that the facts supported Tanner was the victim, but the public opinion went in the other direction. Jeremy believes that it is open season on social media influencers. He said, quote, it's cool to just shoot them no matter what the facts are, unquote. Jeremy Cook ended his statement by claiming the world is living in a time where public opinion can be easily manipulated. I think that Tanner's father fundamentally misunderstands how Tanner's behavior contributed to the outcome. The feelings of those who support Allen are legitimate. Tanner was the aggressor, and the state should have never brought charges against Allen. This was not an example of public opinion being manipulated. This was a case of a creepy, 
and unsettling prankster who targeted an innocent person. Tanner is a bully who harasses people and hides behind the idea that he is just perpetrating pranks. Now moving to my final thoughts. Even though Tanner did not literally dodge a bullet in this case, he did figuratively dodge one. This should serve as a wake-up call, but unfortunately, it probably will not. There is this sense that Tanner will keep playing pranks until he is forced to stop. Unfortunately, the force he encounters could be lethal. Those are my thoughts on the case of Tanner Cook. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.